All right. We're live, right? Yep. Um, just a quick heads okay. up for those of you who usually watch us on YouTube and you're like, okay, we don't see your ugly faces. Well, that's because <laughs> technical difficulties, so we're trying a new setup for now. Yeah. So just bear with us. I think we'll be all right. We'll figure it out, and then you'll be able to see our ugly mugs again one yep. day. Exactly. <laughs> But BDSM people, booze, dessert, smoke, and meats, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, I am Professor Porkcoin, and I'm here with my lovely co-host. The Meat Viking. So, Meat Viking, we are continuing our journey here with the United States. And uh, we are going to talk about Idaho today. Yes, we are. It's not me to hoe this time. Now, whenever... Yeah, whenever I always hear Idaho, I always immediately think, I'm not the hoe, you the hoe. Yep. Like, that's one of the first things from being a kid, yep. says Idaho, no, you the hoe. Yep. <laughs> wonder if kids still do that. So, oh, man, they've got to. It's got to be one of those things that's passed down, right? I would hope so, but, you know, like, kids these days are a bunch of fucking shitters, so. I'm sure they probably have some other thing, too. But, that's fair. Um, <laughs> so... Let's see. First thing, man, what's in the cup? What's the beer that you got for today? So I picked up a plethora of beer today, actually, while I was out at the uh, local meat market. And you'll remember this from your time up here around this time of year. Uh, the place that we live in goes crazy for a little something known as Oktoberfest. Ah, yes. The Oktoberfest is on its way. Yep, and so I picked up the Oktoberfest from uh, Mommy Bay Brewing Company. So, okay, little taster's note here. Not bad. <laughs> okay, anything but, appropriate out of it? So, you know, like in general, I'm not a... Uh, how do I put this? A lager person. Um, in general, okay. and this this has very it's an Oktoberfest style beer, which tend to be like lager beers. Um, but like it's it's good. Like if you like your typical American style beer, um, or like a, a German style beer, I would say that this is for you. It's just it's one of the ones that I had. It's just not for me. It's a good drink. It's a good drink. But you're going to drink it anyway, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a 5.2 alcohol, well, uh, alcohol by volume. Um, And I guess it's known as a Marzen? M-A-R-Z-E-N? Yeah, the Marzen. Yep. So, now what you got in your cup? Oh, man, today is um, more of the, the Great Lakes. It's the Elliot Ness, the Ooh. Amber Lager. Have you ever had that one? I have not. Uh, it came in that variety pack. So I'm still drinking the rest of it. I've only got a couple more left. Yeah. But 6.1% uh, alcohol. And, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of some nice, smooth flavors to it. Uh, can't really taste anything like nutty, but you know what? Not a bad beer. Not a bad beer. I think that's kind of like the general takeaway from today's episode. Not a bad beer. Not a bad beer. You're right. So, well, think of that. I think that could be our uh, our safe word for the day. I think it could be beer. Beer. <laughs> Not, a beer right? Not a bad beer. Not a bad beer. It's like uh, when well, you go home and you're like, "Who's not a bad dog?" Yeah. Who's a good boy? Right. Who's a good beer? Who's a good beer? <laughs> uh, all right. So moving along, um, Idaho, dude. Um, you know there are some pretty interesting foods that are out in Idaho that I certainly uh want to discuss and figure out why. But the first one that you have to think about, and it's not even a food; it's a food company so it's orida so have you gotten ever gotten like tater tots or any of that shit oh yeah orida before orida tater tots yeah. orida, orida crispy cut fries 
Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what's kind of funny is that the people that started it were actually Mormon. <laughs> um, and, and you know, what's funny is that they, they actually started this company in order to be a distributor of sweet corn in the United States. Huh. And yeah, and what happened is they wound up getting some backing from a brother-in-law, and they had a frozen food plant that was in Ontario. So that's po- kind of where it started. The primary facility was in Ontario, Oregon, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the food plant was right at the border of Idaho. Okay. So they converted into a freaking potato facility, and that's kind of where it started out. It started out as Oregon Frozen Food Company, right? Mm-hmm. So they did all the tater tots, they did all the bite-sized logs and the potatoes and all that leftover shit for French fries and whatnot, and tater tots are still apparently their number one thing. But in the 60s, this place actually built another place in Burley, Idaho, and they changed their name. So think about it. It's from Oregon in Idaho. So they took the first couple letters of Oregon and the, and the couple letters from Idaho and Ora Ida superimposed their freaking thing so you can totally see that but i didn't even think that was even a thing until i read and did some research on it that oregon idaho or ida like damn how yep. stupid do you have to be well it's like texarkana <laughs> you know it's like texas and arkansas oh god yeah yeah but uh there's a, i don't mean to interrupt you here but if i'm ever to go missing i think the place that you want to look for me is in burley idaho that's probably where I Early would show Idaho. up. <laughs> <laughs> so. But now it's uh, now Orida is actually owned by Heinz. So Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We'll talk about that when we get to that state. But Heinz coins everything now. They've got it. And now their slogan is when it says Orida, it's all Rida. And I feel like that's just a shitty. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, dude, slogan. I, I don't want my food to be all Rida. Like. I can make all right a food at home, you know? Yeah. So so now everything's basically corporate out of the Heinz thing in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But it started out in, in uh, Oregon and then moved to I- Idaho. So <laughs> I like, figured I'd have to give that like little bit of a lesson. Sh- uh, shy away from like, oh, my God. It's that one company. And like their catchphrase was slap your mama good. You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, now we got it's all Slap right. Your mama good. Yeah. <laughs> so, what uh, what do you got over there? Anything from from that side of the woods? Uh, so because we were on Idaho and things like tater tots, I was able to pull up some numbers, and it turns out that. Idaho leads the nation in potato production by nearly one third of all U.S. potatoes. Um, more than one hundred million hundred weight of potatoes annually, and it's grown on more than three hundred thousand acres. Uh, Man, that's a lot of freaking potatoes. Yeah. Just trying to see. It looks like the eastern Idaho region grows most of the potato crop, making it one of the uh, best areas for it. In fact, it looks like on this map that only the east side of Idaho um, grows the crops, but perhaps I'm just looking at like a uh, per capita map sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, this is gonna be fun to splice this shit together. Yeah, you yeah, know, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting decent at it at least. Hopefully, well, that's, that's good, right? Uh, so where's, where did we break? Uh, the last thing I remember was you were talking about whatever uh, brewery you were getting at, because then it started getting all wonky. Oh, so I, I talked about how it looked like on the map, the only side of. Idaho, that grew potatoes was the east side. Yeah, there you go. And then oh. it started getting wonky. So okay, that's fair. That's about the time that shit hit the fan on my end. <laughs> yeah. But uh, since you brew up, brought up the brewing company here, uh, 
we're going to go with the basic brewing company here, which is the IBC, also known as the Idaho Brewing Company. Okay. Known across eastern Idaho for its award-winning handcrafted ales and lagers, the IBC Tasting Room overlooks the scenic Snake River and provides a wonderful, relaxing atmosphere to taste our many different styles of beer, allowed to hold meetings, have events, catch live music and entertainment, check out the brewery and take tours, learn about how they uh, do their beer making process, and uh, can actually buy full kegs there if you wanted to, which is pretty fucking dope. Yeah. Um, they do have quite a few selection of year-round brews. Uh, what a Pair, Red Warrior, IRA, Deep Creek Ale, um, a Black Lager, a Highland Scotch Ale, Wolf's Oatmeal Stout, and then they've got some seasonal. So it's a Raspberry Wheat, a Foxy Blonde Lager. They have an Oktoberfest, uh, a Raspberry Oatmeal Stout, and some others, but every Tuesday, the first Tuesday of each month, there is a traditional Celtic session hosted by, and can you guess the name of this band? No. The Wild (laughs) Potatoes. (laughs) So, that was kind of something that I, uh, I wanted to See, apparently they also do wines there, but I'm not in the mood to fucking talk about wines. Um, looking at their oatmeal stout, uh, it's won several medals, uh, bronze in 2011, silver medal in 2011, 2012 silver, and 2014 gold for their Wolf's Head oatmeal stout. Oh, stouts are good. Yeah, it's got a, a ABV of 6.3%. And let me look at their raspberry oatmeal stout. Um, 5.9 ABV, but I'm not getting any medals or anything on that. Uh, they're, what a pear is a crisp, tart fruit beer with a brewed with pear juice. Has a unique honey Chardonnay wine characteristics. Um... Uh, 5% ABV, so you know you're looking at some respectable beers here. Okay, down the middle or in the middle of the road. Yeah. Not a bad deal. No. I could probably drink one of those with one of these foods that's going to be next, man. Yep. The the okay. highest that I'm seeing in my general uh, looking through is a 7.5, which is the strong scotch ale style. Yeah, well, you know what? A lot of those uh, places up in the Northwest, especially if you go to Utah, they have, uh, because there's like a Mormon, and we'll probably get to this when we get to Utah, but there's a Mormon presence that they don't allow high-volume beers to be um, served on kegs. Like when I went up there before, a couple of years back, the highest you can get was like 5%. But in bottles, though, they are like, oh, sure, we'll bring you up to 11 or some dog crap like that. But right. anything draft, it's like the Mormons don't want anything to deal with high alcohol shit. I mean, they just hate fun. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, so this food that I found, too, I feel it kind of goes great with any of those beers that you were talking about. It's called a freaking finger steak. <laughs> now, <laughs> you're probably wondering yourself, what the hell is a finger steak? I am. Well, a finger steak is basically uh, leftover tenderloin, and I've seen other recipes where they have, uh, you know, flat iron, but you basically take your tenderloin and you you cut them up into little pieces so they look like uh, strips, and then you deep fry them. So it's basically like a, a, a chicken fried steak or like a steak, fr- you know, whatever you get in the South, but yep. just cut up in fingers, and nice. then you dip them and it's got fries and everything like that. So I find it kind of funny that this place all the way in the Northwest, you know, is doing some type of Southern food, but I, I bet you anything that any of the chicken fried steak or, you know, the steak fried uh, stuff is way better down here with the gravy and whatnot. Yep. So, but yeah, freaking finger steaks. Like, <laughs> I don't know why, you, why you'd call them that, <laughs> but I can see why you would, you know? Right. <laughs> I just feel like that's, that's kind of weird. So if we want to go into a, another food here, um, and I actually didn't think this, 
because when you think of Idaho, it appears to be rather landlocked. Yeah. But apparently, um, in their lakes that they have in Idaho, they uh, are known for their seafood. Um, one of the, in particular is the sturgeon fish. Um, and so that is a common dish to get in Idaho is the Idaho sturgeon. And uh, pulling up a statistic here at the Snake River Grill, 60% of the restaurant sales come from seafood such as trout and sturgeon raised on nearby farms. Hmm, no shit. Yep. Um, it looks like they go through, just in sturgeon alone, 135,000 pounds annually. So, that's a... Uh, I feel like that's a stupid amount. Yeah. I mean, sturgeons... <laughs> See, I know there's some beefy fish. Yeah. Yeah, the average weight of a sturgeon is 500 pounds. Damn, okay. Yeah. That's the average, too. Yep. So, shit. Yeah. Well, I know another one of the things that is pretty popular up there is actually called the Idahoan. And it's a it's a sandwich. So basically, if you like grilled cheese or if you like anything cheese, uh, you take some meatloaf with it, and you throw in some mashed potatoes, and you basically make that into some type of you know grilled cheese adventure. Mm -hmm. And I feel like. I would totally eat something like that. I think that kind of goes back to some of my childhood stuff of having like meatloaf sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> and putting on some mashed potatoes and the cheese probably just adds to it. But I got a feeling that this would probably be a really good sandwich. Mm hmm. That, that sounds good as hell. Yeah, it does. You know, and I, I guess. I, I guess there's a lot of other things that they have at this place, too, that still do it. Um, it looks like they have some stuff that has like peppers and, you know, uh, some coleslaw and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that these things look pretty damn good. So yeah, think about meatloaf, think about meatloaf and, and, uh, potatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, you said meatloaf and, uh, yeah. I was going through like the uh, top 22 things to eat in idaho and apparently they kind of, the way they have this done up looks almost like a meatloaf dish and it's beef tongue oh shit haven't we talked about beef stuff before did we talk about tongue or i know we did oysters rocky mountain oysters well i think we did that in our overall episode when we went through everything that you can get from the cow um, yeah that's true but uh, yeah, apparently this is one of those dishes that you can get, and uh, it's often just served how it is and with some bread. Ooh, I don't know. I feel like I'd have to get that seasoned pretty nice, or even like have it smoked or something. Well, like, uh, it just gives me like a liver and onions vibe. Yeah, you know, like I'm sure it's probably good. I'm yeah, sure there's probably the way you prep it is fucking delicious, but. You know, when you think of beef tongue right off the bat, I yeah. just think of like liver and onions. Yeah, and and that's fair. Like, but the way uh this looks, because remember how I said it resembled a meatloaf. Yeah. Um, you ever get those meatloaves that people just put like a lot of ketchup on top of it? Oh yeah. Yeah. So imagine that, but like almost extra saucy. <laughs> Ew. Okay. Yeah. So. And that's the best. So this is seasoned. It's not like straight raw tongue. Yeah. Yeah. That's... You're you're not muck tucking out here. Yeah. Oh my god. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, the old muck tuck. Yeah. So let's go. Uh, we're gonna move from I think a little, you know, savory. You want to move into some sweet foods? Yeah. You know what? And all right. So here's another thing that apparently is super popular in Idaho. And the first thing you're gonna think of when you hear it is like, why? Why yep. would you do something like that? Okay. And yeah. it's, 
It's called an ice cream potato, right? And you know what? If listeners out here, you're you're hearing that, you're probably saying why. I, I dare you to just Google it, okay? Just Google it and look at the first thing, and it looks exactly like you would picture. It looks like a potato that's been cut down the middle, and it's got ice cream and all that other crap in the middle of it, and it looks basically like that, okay? Yep. But... The thing that's really weird about it and freaky about it is that some dude came up with a way where he makes ice cream and shapes it into a potato and then covers it in cinnamon so that it looks like a freaking potato. So when you cut it down the middle, it looks like a potato and they throw in all the other, you know, like Oreos to make it look like there was dirt and shit like that on it. Yep. So it's really gelato. It's really ice cream. That's in the form of a of a potato. So don't go thinking that, oh my God, why the hell are they doing that? Because when I first started researching this, I was thinking that too. I was like, why? Why would you put ice yeah. cream on a potato? Those things don't go together. Like not even sweet, savory shit. But when I read into it more, I realized that yeah, it's it's pretty good because it it's just to look like like a potato, but it tastes actually really, really good. Yeah. Uh so we're gonna see if I can actually screen share on this setup real quick. Oh man. You might be going into some dangerous territory. Uh, and I want to share this uh, because that's exactly what it looks like when you uh, <laughs> you Google ice cream potato. Like, so we're not messing around. It looks like a baked potato with some sour cream, some butter, and some chives on top, right? Yes. Like, and here's one that looks like a loaded baked potato. This one I could tell a little bit better that that's like chocolate gelato down there. But yeah. <laughs> so, you know, what's funny though is that the guy that created it, it's a uh, Chef Lou, and he owns his own little place, and it was on Diners, Drivers, and Dives. Oh, so, nice. Um, you know, I, I guess I can probably try to find out where that episode is. And, uh, you know, he, he basically came up with it about 40 years ago, and it's all retro. Like, his whole entire thing is like a, an old-school Beach Boy, like, 60s-style diner that you can drive in and, and get all your shit. So, um, but it's about five bucks for you to get this uh, Idaho ice cream potato. No, that's not bad. Um, I think we're going to... for the size. Right. Another thing... Um, while we're on the topic of here, apparently I can't spell worth a goddamn, uh, something super popular in the Idaho region is huckleberries. Okay. Um, and so those of you who don't know, huckleberry is a small berry, red, blue, or black in colors. Um, and you don't usually see this berry a whole lot of places. Um, apparently they were traditionally collected by Native American and some of the First Nations peoples along the Pacific Coast. Um, and they have a very tart taste to them. Kind of similar to, uh, you ever have gooseberry? Oh, yeah. So, I, assuming huckleberry is closer to gooseberry. Um, but yeah, apparently they love their huckleberry in Idaho. So I don't know. Maybe this is something that is grown in Idaho. Let's see if the old Google machine. It's got to be pretty native up that way. Right. Actually, so this makes sense now. Huckleberries are the Idaho state fruit. <laughs> Go so, figure. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I think I saw something about them doing ice cream with it. Mm hmm Well, that's what I was saying. Like, that milkshake is essentially, like, your ice cream thing. So I would assume they do other things. Um, let's see. I know I saw something else. Uh, that's not. So they do, uh, they also do it not as just dessert form, but, like, on side dishes, too. Like, uh, they'll serve, um, at this one place, it's kind of like a restaurant that's like a hunting lodge. They, uh, do, like, hunting game-themed dishes. So you can do, 
Oh, like a bison thing or yeah like elk with uh wild huckleberries and stuff like that yeah so <clears throat> okay oh. well and I, I know there's another dessert that i found too um and it's actually from the uh hawaii company okay so it's spelled O W Y H E E, and it's O Y E. Like because the history is that uh, it's one of the sailors from seventeen whatever landed in some place, and it reminded you know they got to eventually being Hawaii, and then there's a river up there that's O Y E, and so it's named after that. But they have candies that they've been doing for over a hundred years, and it's not like you're gonna find it in a restaurant, but you're gonna find it in those old timey general stores, you know, okay. like the souvenir shops. So for anybody that remembers the general stores way back when, you know, you got like penny candy every now and then you'll find a place that still has them in like some rural, rural town. But uh, the Idaho candy company basically does all these things and they have a bunch of different flavors, like a cherry cocktail. They've got some huckleberry gems. They got some stuff called chicken bones that look like chicken bones. There's an Idaho spud that looks like a potato um so they've kind of modeled off of a bunch of different flavors and i i think you kind of have to go check it out if you if you get to it because the idaho candy company uh, started out from someone in chicago they moved to salt lake city and then eventually to boise idaho and uh they just started teaming up with people who knew how to do shit and now they make it so Damn. they were uh oh man i don't know if they make these but you remember way back when with the uh, the old cigarette candy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was a couple different kinds. I remember the first one where it was just straight up sugar and it had the little red dot at the end. And then I remember the, the one that had a gum where if you blew into it, it actually puffed out the, the sugar dust and it looked like you were smoking. We had all the cool candy back in the day. <laughs> But yeah, so I, I think it, I would definitely want to try some of this chocolate just to even just have a little bit, not really go buck wild with it. Cause I'd probably get some type of sugar diabetic coma, but. Oh yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. But Hawaii. Yeah. It's Hawaii. Mm. Kind of like you're saying Hawaii, but in special ed's voice from crank anchors. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen crank anchors in ages. <laughs> so. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there's probably more foods. I, I really wish we had some people from Idaho to kind of give us an idea of whether or not this was, you know, if there's stuff that we're missing. I'm sure there is. So maybe we'll have to revisit later on in an episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people uh, go to Idaho or I mean, leave Idaho. I mean, what's, what's really in I Idaho? Besides Boise, right? There's probably like some M. Night Shyamalan's village shit going on in Idaho, and that's why nobody ever leaves. I mean, there's the university, right? Boise State. They, they're the ones that have the blue football field. I, but, sure. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I mean. <laughs> I'm not the sportsman here. I was at work the other day and somebody was like, Hey, who do you have on the fight? And I was like, who's fighting the supervisor? I want in. <laughs> <laughs> and then he told me it was Manny versus Pacquiao. And I was like, dude, I have no idea, but I will bet you two Snickers bar and a single gummy bear. So <laughs> I don't know if I've won or lost that bet yet. Uh, that reminds me of another comic that I saw where the guy was gaming and he's like, hold on, man, I got to fight the boss. Yep. And then he turns around and punches his boss. And he's like, all right, I'm back. Yep. Uh, but, well, man, I ain't got anything else about Idaho. I feel uh, like it's kind of self explanatory with that. Yeah. Uh, potatoes. More yeah. potatoes. Dessert potatoes. Sad beer. And hopefully some vodka. <laughs> you know, we should have looked at. Because vodka comes from potato, yes? Yes. How much vodka does Idaho produce? Does Udaho.
So apparently there is a specific brand of vodka produced in Idaho called 44 Degrees North. Um, it's a very feng shui looking bottle. They have actually a Huckleberry vodka. It's a 70 proof vodka, so it's respectable. Um, Magic Valley Wheat. Check their about section. I'd give it a try. Yeah. I mean, why not drinking stuff straight from the, the source? Yeah. And why it not? looks like, honestly, um, Whoa, excuse me. They, uh, they're doing this to essentially distill 100% Idaho products. Um, they use winter wheat blended with Rocky Mountain spring water to naturally influ infuse their uh, vodkas. Um, they only use Idaho Mountain Huckleberries, Rainer Cherries, and Sunnyside Slope Nectarines in their stuff. Ooh, so, nice. Yeah. I was going to see about how much they like sell in a year, but I'm not seeing anything. But, like, they've got a... I would try the Huckleberry one. They actually have a Huckleberry Lemonade uh, drink that they mix. And then, you know, Farmer's Bloody Mary. You can't really mess up a Bloody Mary if you know how to make it. <laughs> um, Nectarine Sweet Iced Tea. That'd probably be good. Like an iced tea with a little bit of an orange blash. But I'm not seeing about how much they produce. Um... <laughs> So, which is a shame because I should have thought about that, but I didn't. Ah, uh, shit happens. Right. So, but uh, I think uh, I think that's gonna wrap up Idaho. All right, man. We so. will be moving on to the next one. Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, right? Iowa. Yeah. Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> or is it uh, Illinois? I think it's Illinois. I don't fucking know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well foodies uh we love you let us know uh if you like potatoes as much as idaho does because i don't think you do <laughs> <laughs> and uh i've been the meat viking with my wonderful co-host uh professor Porkline. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all later yep bye bye <laughs>